What is going on, Franchise World? I'm Nick Powells. I'm going to be joined by Charles and Nicola, my co-host in a second. Uh, welcome to Season 2, Episode 10. Uh, this time we are going to do another Meet the Zor. Uh, the idea for anybody watching this clip, if you are looking to buy a franchise, this will give you insight into show homes, which happens to be our guest today with Matt Kelton. Um, or if you're a franchise broker and you're looking for a little bit more information about how do you position a brand, uh, we're gonna dive into that. So let me bring in Charles and Matt. Matt, thank you for giving us some time today. Um, would love for you to give the positioning statement on show homes. So let's start with the why show homes. Like why would anybody, whether you're a buyer or a broker, uh, have interest in being a part of your family? Well, Show Homes, we're America's largest home staging and design network. We've been around since the 1980s. We're really the, the largest player in that space. And, uh, you know, we're, we're a brand that we're have around 55 locations in 19 states. And it's we're dealing with people who love design, love watching HGTV, love going to open houses for fun. And it's a business with, you know, great unit economics or average franchisee. Um, Gross is around half a million a year. Our top guys are doing around a million five. So it's a business that has some solid unit, unit economics behind it. But yeah, you know, we're, we're we're gonna have our, our biggest week this week actually than we've ever had. We're actually gonna close three deals, which I've never done before in my <laughs> history of franchising. So it's kind of bizarre doing this in a pandemic, but you know, we're getting a lot of people who they're ready to change, uh, you know, life is short. They wanna do something they're passionate about. And I've, I've not seen people as passionate about a brand as as show homes they love design and love real estate and it's uh it's an interesting uh culture and definite uh cool business model for sure matt getting to know the show homes brand and what i found interesting was how show homes migrated right i should say naturally evolved from staging to actual design Right. Um, and I, I just, you know, we, we frequently ask franchisors, and I, I think many don't have a good answer for this, which is why now. And, and I think you you brought up the value proposition, which is in light of COVID, people have a newfound, at least approach to their homes, its value and, and what they want to enjoy. Well, absolutely. And, you know, I think so many people are working from home now, they're realizing that <laughs> It, it makes an impact having a great home. And so we're seeing people move and uh, uh, expanding their home office and things like that. And so, uh, yeah, but you know, it's just, it's, it's funny. I know you're, you're your long time attorney. Uh, we sold a franchise this week to two attorneys in Nashville. And they're like, I'm tired of working 12 hour days, worrying about the billings, commuting an hour and 10 minutes each way. I've got young kids and you know, life is just too short and I want to do something I'm, I'm passionate and love. And so that's the, you know, when we talk to people and that, you know, we want people who are really all in about real estate and design. If they talk to us and say, well, I'm comparing you an expense reduction analyst and a, you know, Liberty tax, well, you should do that. <laughs> Go do something else. Cause we want someone who's really focused like a laser for what we're looking to do. And there are people who, who love this space and that's what they're interested in. And uh, we're also getting people. And what's interesting is people who are, Formerly, I really only want to look at food, and with the COVID changes, they're they're changing kind of what they're looking at, uh, and so they're opening up to different kind of home-based service companies that are essential businesses. So that's been another change. Matt, when you were giving your opening statement, and and I would love your insight on this. Um, you you hit financials as right. this is what you could potentially make, but beyond that, so you you hit that from a positioning, and then you just you just went all into passion. Right. So I'm curious on your opinion, because you're obviously on the three deals that close. The financials, in my opinion, end up being a check mark. Like you're, right. you're going to know what you want to invest and the return that you want to get. But if, from what we're hearing from other franchisees, like that's all that is, is a check mark. Yet franchisors, like that seems to be the, the, the easiest pathway to positioning a brand and saying, why now? Yet right. what I'm hearing is you have three people that were passionate about life, life changes Right. Uh, decide to make a change during COVID because they're they're sick and tired of not doing the thing that they care about. Are you finding that even even though that's a part of the success of show homes, that it's not it's not the why. Like the why ends up being deeper than the financials. Oh, absolutely. And I think 
you know, these people are leaving really lucrative careers and we're real upfront with them. It's a good year and a half or two years till you can replace any kind of income. And it's not a guarantee. And you know, there's some great finance options right now. Like the SBA has the $150,000 express program where they pay the first six months and, and those things help for sure. But at the end of the day, you know, time is, is your biggest asset. I mean, I've worked from home for 15 years and I haven't missed a baseball game, a band concert. And that's at the end of the day, so much more important than titles and you know prestige or any of that kind of stuff. And so that's one aspect, but it's also being able to do something that you love and not dealing, you know, having, you know, I, for franchising, I've been doing this for 20 plus years. I was in corporate America and dealing with the politics and wondering if you're going to get laid off and just, you know, the, the, the kind of stuff that you deal with in that aspect, but being your own boss, but and not only being your own boss, but also doing something that you you're excited about. You know, we do personality profiles of all of our incoming people and skills assessments. And we want to make sure this is something that's going to get them out of bed in the morning. And for them, they love working. They don't care if they're working 10, 12 hour days. And the reality is it's 50, 60 hour weeks. It's a lot harder than corporate America jobs is the reality. But you're doing something that you love and you're passionate about. And you know, those are those are the critical pieces and the people who make it are the ones who love that. The ones who who tend to struggle or don't make it are the ones who, who don't have those assets and, and that kind of drive. Because you have to have that if you're going to make it because franchising is hard work and, and we, we don't sugarcoat it with people. But it's doing something that they that they love. Hey, Matt, let, let's drive a little into the value proposition. Right. When, sure. when we're working with franchisors. And when people ask, should I franchise, really a, a big factor is whether or not you could deliver value unit economics to your franchisees, right? right? And for show homes, it seems like as your network grows, those unit economics, that value to your franchisees become more compelling. If you could just speak to at least those, the value of what the system gives your franchisees, I, I'd be interested in hearing that. Well, we have our complete package is 85,000 to get into this and the franchise fee is 49.9, but they're going to get, you know, that's going to include that, that 85,000, 20 grand in inventory. It's going to include uh, your website, legal contracts, your marketing materials, all the various software tools, vendor programs, our online manual system with over a thousand pages of documentation. Uh, your training, we pay for a home staging certification. And so it really is a turnkey package. And, you know, we tell people there's two roads you can do. If you want to do staging and you just want to do it by yourself and be a solo stager, you can get a certification and, and, and try to figure this out on your own. We want people who want to come in and build a million dollar business. And, you know, the tool to do that is show homes. And we know how to do it. And we've been doing it a long time. And we're going to give you all the programs. And, you know, we can tell you what to do, what not to do but you're going to get there a lot faster for us. And then there's the exit strategy aspect. And that's really where you make your money in franchising. And I don't think we probably talk enough about that, uh, but that's, that's kind of our goal. And, you know, when we talk to people that we've, we've done everything, we've been doing this for 35 years, <laughs> we've made the mistakes you would, you would make to trying to do this. And, you know, people who try to do it on their own. Also, you're like an Island. You don't have that family and that system to, to lean on. And so for us, providing the training, the support and the infrastructure, it's just you're going to ramp up way quicker. And it just to me, I'm a big fan of franchising just for those reasons, because you're going to get to that next level with support. And, you know, I saw as a franchisee, I went from uh, myself with another brand ramping up and then selling. And um, that's the end goal for franchise, you know, with that we have for franchisees as well. Matt, if you if you flash back pre pre COVID and and not that your excitement was not high about the opportunity, but right. COVID hits um, and clearly there's there's a shakeup to job stability, right. and now we're seeing the next wave of those that are north of a hundred thousand um, dollars have turbulence with their jobs because right. that's the that's the next layer, and those are the ones that are starting to to get laid off or getting warned that there could, this could be coming, cases are rising. It's creating disruption in stability of jobs. 
Does your excitement pre-COVID change to your excitement now from a franchise growth standpoint, knowing that the pool is filling up with more buyers? I'm absolutely way more excited, to be honest. Uh, you know, from a system perspective, we're our, you know, we were up 30% uh, revenue as a franchise system a year ago, and we're going to be pretty flat the first half of this year and really didn't lose a franchise. And if anything, we added an additional six units. Um, and so I think that's a, that's a good thing right there. But, uh, you know, just to be honest, I've been doing this 14 years and it's been hard to sell franchises the last few years with the economy being, re economy being really strong. I don't know they're, whether they're tripled the number of franchises in the last 10, 15 years. I mean, there's a lot of really good competition out there as well. So it's not just uh, jobs, it's other competing, competing uh, franchisors. But yeah, I mean, I, the, just the quality of leads that I've seen in the last six weeks or so, I think there was a, uh, is, is unlike anything I've seen in my career. Uh, I think there was a little bit of shell shock in the first couple of weeks, you know, March, you know, April. But since, you know, the first part of May, it's just been kind of amazing. And June was just massive. And we're getting leads like just the quantity, like I've not seen. We work with a lot of broker groups and I'm hearing the same thing from all the bro broker networks. And it's just the, it's not just the, the quantity, it's the quality. It's, you know, people, and a guy with major producer from a Hollywood TV studio. I don't know how he, he found out about us, but he's looking, I mean, lawyers, I mean, you know, CEOs people who you would not think of buying a little home staging franchise <laughs> who are now looking uh, at the next level. And the reality is it's, it's going to be hard for someone, a middle-aged person, especially to find a six figure job these days. And so what are you going to do? And if you can do something to replace that, but also do something you love, I think it's going to be staggering the growth we're going to see in the next year. So hopefully franchisors are getting ready and getting aggressive because, uh, I think uh, it's going to be a, an awesome second half for sure. Matt, when, when you're you're um, when you're talking to these potential candidates, right? And I and I know you just mentioned about replacing income and and uncertainty. What what are the the main drivers they're communicating to you as they reach out? Uh, they want to do something that they love doing. They you know, they're tired of, of doing a job that's not fulfilling. You, you normally, you know, some an old guy told me once again, old guy, probably my age now, that they talk to you because there's a rock in their shoe. There's a reason that they filled out a form. And so they're unhappy or unfulfilled. And so that's normally one aspect. You know, you know, sometimes they've lost their jobs, but a lot of times they love real estate. You know, they love HGTV, but, uh, you know, they're looking, it's beyond just the money aspect. You know, I think that they want to be able to, you know, when they look at our unit economics and see that they can actually scale this and do some pretty decent volume, that's exciting. But um, they want to do something that they enjoy. But, you know, another big aspect of this, we have a large number of husband wife teams who do this. And there, there aren't a lot of jobs where you can work with your wife. I know Nick, you and your wife work <laughs> together, <laughs> but most places you can't do that. But, you know, we have people who he was a banker and she was a designer. I don't know where else you could have a, a company where you could do that together. And so that's been, that's one of the, the big drivers. And one of the, you know, the uh, two of the three people that we just sold this week are couples who they're not ready to retire. They're, you know, baby boomer, you know, age wise, and they want to do something that, together that they love doing. And so that's, that's something, um, but we're also getting some younger people, you know, the lawyers I was telling you about, you know, they're early forties with young kids and they want to spend more time with their families. I mean, and so that's a big aspect, you know, you know people, uh, I think they've gotten a taste for working from home and the thought of having to go back to work, it's not real attractive. So how can I continue to work from home and spend more time with my family is a big driver for sure. Matt, the, the question that I want to close with is you flash forward end of 2021 and you think back on the, the last 18 months. Uh, if things go really well, what is one thing you've done as a business? And if things have gone really poorly, what would be the regret that you have? Well, I think if we've done well, then it, all the, you know, the big thing is the, the new people that you bring in, are they ramping up? We want them to hit a certain uh, revenue level and we want them to be successful. And I think that, you know, you fail when, you know, 
you bring in new people and they don't make it. Really, that first year is, is really critical. And we spend a lot of time and energy uh, on the ramp up aspect of it. And so, you know, our, our goal is, are they well capitalized? Do they have a plan? Are they following the system? And so I would say uh, making sure that, you know, our retention rate is high. And we also do franchise business review. There's their satisfaction scores. We measure that as well. So are they happy with, with the job we're doing? And so, you know, another piece of just before we break, I do want to touch on one of that's had a big impact on us that I've, we are doing virtual meet the team days. That's had a huge impact. Um, it's a three hour zoom call. They meet face to face with my CEO in Nashville, my operations team who's they're based, you know, in California and Tennessee. And then we'll uh, we'll do a Zoom call with the franchisee doing a tour of a warehouse so they can see this is what my 7000 square foot warehouse has with half a million in inventory. Then, you know, we went to, you know, last week we went to uh, San Diego on the other part of that call and saw Philip Rivers, the football players, four million dollar mansion overlooking the Pacific Ocean. So just being able to really get a feel for my team as well as what we do in the field and get a feel for you know, you're going to be working with some of the most upscale luxury properties in the U.S. It just has really been uh, kind of blown me away as far as being able to tell the story about show homes. And so I'd say for those of you who aren't using technology and, and doing those virtual meet the team days to really tell your story, it's been extremely powerful for us. Yeah, I think it's a it's a fantastic insight to to close on uh, because the the reality is us as human beings are have become forgiving. Like this this is this is almost the new version of breaking bread uh, because of restrictions, right. and we're, we're okay with it. Yep. Um, the the last the last data point that I want to say because I, I think it brings it up about um, are you owning the opportunity and some of the leads that you're seeing? Uh, CNBC reported today that. Uh, roughly 11% of those who have lost their jobs are not going to be reemployed by those employers. That means 17.6 million people are going to be on the streets looking for their next thing. If 1% of those has any interest in franchising, we're talking about 176,000 human beings that could potentially fit into a franchise brand. For the brands that, that own this and make sure their message is crisp. Listen to the advice Matt just gave. I think there's a there's there's big opportunity here, um, and you know we're we're seeing that with show home. So as it's a very complex thing on the brain because you know we're 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 still battling COVID. There's no doubt about that. Businesses are still battling to stay stay afloat, but there's opportunity on the other side of this, and this is an example of it. Um, Matt Kelton, appreciate the time. I'm Matt right, Charles. I'm Nick Powell's. Take care. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. All right. Thanks. Bye.